In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome, Comet Chasers. This month we focus on 13P Olbers, which is now at its best. We'll also make some early predictions about Comet C 2023A3 Tsuchinshan Atlas and check in on 12P Ponce Brooks. Heinrich Wilhelm Matthäus Olbers discovered this comet on the 6th of March, 1815. He described the view in his Comet Seeker telescope as small, with a barely defined nucleus and a very pale transparent coma. His telescope was a small refractor with a wide field, providing a view not unlike that of backyard telescopes today. 13P is a Halley-type comet that returns every 70 years or so. It was last in the inner solar system in 1956, when it became as bright as magnitude 6.5, featuring a one-degree tail. Afterward, it slipped away into the far reaches of the outer solar system, some 33 times the distance from the sun to the Earth. Back once again, it was first spotted in images by Alan Hale last August, using a large telescope from Las Cumbres Observatory at Siding Spring, Australia. This month, 13P is visible in binoculars from northern latitudes until approximately the 19th of July, when moonlight will begin to interfere. It won't be bright and easy, however, so it may be best to use a small telescope. It will be detectable in small telescopes all month, and easy from the 4th through the 24th, excluding the 19th and 20th due to moonlight. Get it now, because by mid-August it will no longer be visible in small telescopes. Sadly, Southern Hemisphere observers are not going to get a good look at this one. The best visibility of an evening comet like 13P is the time when the contrast between the comet and the background sky is maximized. After sunset, the comet is high in the sky, which is good but the sky is too bright for it to be visible. As the evening progresses, the comet moves lower, which makes it dimmer, which lowers the contrast. But as the sky becomes progressively darker, the contrast increases. There is a moment in time when the contrast is maximized. This is the local time labeled on this chart for each evening, which represents the best local time to view the comet on each night. You may need to adjust by an hour for daylight saving or summer time. For best results, start as much as 30 minutes before the indicated time to try to spot enough stars to roughly determine the location of the comet. Use any tool you have that can plot the position of the comet, or use our chart. Or, if your telescope points automatically, use that. The critical piece of information that we provide is the time it will be best visible. If using a chart, orient yourself with the bright stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper. Follow this arc of stars down to near the path of the comet. Use your finder to point near where the comet should be on that date. Insert your widest field eyepiece and have a look in the telescope. You may need to search around a bit. Try memorizing your starting place so you can search in circles around it, always coming back. Eventually, you will see a star that looks wrong. It will be fuzzy and slightly elongated. That's your comet. Congrats. So what's the point of all this? In the popular media, comets are often described as spectacular, and the tail is often misunderstood like a cartoon that whooshes across the sky leaving a trail behind. But real life is more interesting than that. This is a small body of ice and rock, maybe a few tens of miles or kilometers across, orbiting in deep space. Nobody has ever seen or photographed it up close. Where and how it formed is a science mystery, which beckons to be solved. 13P spends the majority of its time far away from the sun in complete darkness, lost to us. When far away, it is only through orbital mechanics that we can predict roughly where it is. After it fades away, it is unlikely to be spotted again until it approaches the sun once more in 2094, warming and shedding its gas and ice into a large cloud that reflects the brightening sunlight, repeating its slow dance in the sky for another generation think of these things. It's long history. The people of years past who peered through a telescope just as you are now. And wonder what it would be like to see it up close, assuming you are lucky enough to spot it. And don't forget to enjoy the evening, away from lights and screens. When C2023A3 Tsuchinshan Atlas was first discovered in January of 2023, its rough orbit caused some excitement. 
because it had the potential to become very bright in September of 2024. But it takes time to get to know a new comet. We need to accumulate measurements of its position to refine the orbit, and we also need to accumulate brightness estimates as it closes in on the sun. Putting these things together, we can begin to predict how bright the comet will be at its peak. But it doesn't end there. We also need to consider how well we will be able to see it in practice. Which latitudes will get the best view? How close to the sun and at maximum brightness will we actually be able to see it? Will it be bright but very close to the horizon? Will it be a morning or evening object? It's common for astronomers to remind the public that comets are unpredictable, but that's not the full truth. While comets are unpredictable, many of the failures of comets to meet expectations in the past came from comparing the maximum brightness of a new comet to past comets of similar maximum brightness, and then engaging in a little wishful thinking. It is difficult to determine how visible the comet will be, and in the past we didn't have the tools to do it. But today, we have Greg Krinklaw's contrast model to make better predictions. Fortunately for us, Greg is the astronomer behind this channel. Many people have become aware that 2023 A3 stopped brightening as expected, beginning in May, which you can see clearly in this magnitude graph. While some of this dip is due to our viewing aspect of the comet, some is also due to a significant slow in brightening as it closes in on the sun. It has begun brightening again, but this drop affects our predictions for its maximum brightness. Keep in mind that a similar change could occur in reverse in the coming weeks, and we could see the comet brighten dramatically. Or it might fade even more. Or it may disrupt and disappear. We will just have to wait and see. So what does the model currently show based on what we see now three months out? Well, we have good news and bad news depending on how you decide to look at it. Greg is currently projecting 2023 A3 to be visible to the unaided eye, but not easily so as seen from country suburban skies in late September to late October, barring moonlight, and depending on your latitude. It will be best in the morning in late September, moving into the evenings in late October and best seen from mid-northern and mid-southern latitudes. The contrast predictions depend on more than just the magnitude, so changes in diameter and condensation will also affect what we see. So consider this to be only an early general idea of what to expect. I think it is safe to say that at this point that it is not very likely to be another hail bop but you never know for sure with comets. Sometimes you just have to wait and see. We will continue to follow this comet saga and don't forget, it's a good object for small telescopes right now for equatorial and southern hemisphere observers. Unfortunately, those in the Northern Hemisphere will have to wait until the end of September for it to grace their skies again. In July 2024, A3 is an evening comet visible in small telescopes from equatorial to southern locations. It is visible for most of the month from country suburban locations. For the most pleasing view, avoid moonlight from the 15th through the 23rd. Lastly, let's check in on our old friend 12P Pons Brooks. It is now fading fast but is still a decent object from the southern hemisphere for small telescopes. It might be spotted in binoculars from a dark side if you hurry. The evening of July 10th may be the last chance. Similarly, it will only be visible in small telescopes under suburban country skies until the 6th. After that, you will need dark skies to spot it in a small telescope. Of course, it will remain visible in larger telescopes for the rest of the month, barring interference from the moon. It is still interesting in images, albeit a shadow of what it was just last month. All in all, July is a good month for chasing comets with a little something for everyone. Be sure to dust off that telescope and drag it out there on the next clear night. Happy comet chasing everyone.